Welcome back to Conversations in Catapults. I'm your host, Nathan, and I am joined by a coven of witches who are going to help me astrally project. Say hello, witches. Oh, shit. Hello, my name is Witch One. <laughs> You're Ben, that's which one you are. <laughs> which one's first? Yeah, that he, he just I went. Play. <laughs> the level seven gnome wizard Windsor Wallaby on the hit podcast Trials and Trebuchets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm witch number two. It's me, Carla, and I'm the second witch. <laughs> and I play the level seven six with Decorative Idleberry from the hit show Trials and Trebuchets. <laughs> Which one? No, not which one. I'm which three. That's which one. I'm Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam. I'm which four. I am terrified of which three. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Conversations in Catapults. <laughs> ah, well, I fully trust all of you not to harvest my organs while we do this astral projection. You shouldn't. Okay. I'll try very hard. <laughs> Look over there. Whoa. <laughs> Hiya! Incredible. But before we actually get around to that, I do have a few questions for you uh, before we get started with the whole process, if that's mm. all right. Mm -hmm. In the two most recent episodes, there is something really fun that happened now that y'all have uh, not been smushed anymore, now that the smush <laughs> is over. One thing that I really wanted to point out was the visit back to Artis's office and Carla, I actually had a question for you um, regarding your activities there. You mentioned that Integrity has a like new interest in learning more about Fidan. Like after meeting her during the smush, does Integrity have an interest in finding her slash bringing her back, or is it more mm. of like trying to learn more about Artis's life before he was a pebble? Oh, I almost feel like. It's sort of a morbid curiosity kind of thing. Um, having met Fidan, like before it was all just in the books and being talked about, but having met her in person and also us being the reason why she shattered and that sort of like a traumatic experience, not really that traumatic, but I guess seeing that when we're in a vulnerable state was very weird. So I think that... At that point, I really want to learn more about um, about her and a little bit of thinking that I may be able to find her, but I'm not sure yet. Oh, interesting. If you if Integrity was able to find her, does Integrity have any sort of plan after that? Or is it just finding her is the key thing here? Like, do, are you asking if I am finding her so that she can be reunited with Artis or just sort of like, I want to explore with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking like, you know, what is Integrity's goal here if she does want to find Fidan? Why? Again, it's sort of that thing where she's miss she's been missing for a long, long time. If Integrity finds her, she's a famous person that um, people have read about. So I feel like integrity is the kind of person who's thinking that i'm sure that i can do it and others can't so like i i know that's pretty uh buck wild or very rude but... that's integrity though it's great <laughs> that sounds like integrity actually yeah no that just <laughs> that's just accurate to who she is uh, excellent now another thing that occurred in that first episode we had a little bit of like mira and adeline interaction mm -hmm. which was very good and we were also able to learn that the freaky uh, ear necklace put there by Adeline, mm -hmm. it was planted and is always listening to everything that Mira says. Yeah. Which is super cool. Love to find out that your girlfriend's like mom is doing that to you. Oh, definitely. Especially given the the conversation between Mira and Serenex about the hatch. Like that's going to that's gonna translate over really well. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> going to go great. Um, so what is Mira's perception, I guess... I could ask like what her perception of Adeline is, but I feel like we have kind of gone over that a bit. I was actually more curious about what her perception is of uh, the Lady of the Woods, Ala Algram. You know, how does she feel about, you know, being kind of like picked for, oh, you could have a purpose, you know, you could have a use for this incredibly like powerful person. Yeah, she's definitely fucking weirded out by it because there was not only the stuff with like Ala staring at her, then Delmas telling her like, yeah, she does that with me as well. That thing of uh, 
Ala being the person who hired Altine to spy on them. And now this kind of continued like spying, this continued involvement. So it's a very odd sense of like, what does she know? And why is she so focused specifically on like Mira and on these other people? So I think that Mira finds the whole thing very confusing and very suspicious and very distrustworthy. <laughs> Yeah, and like the weird thing is that they had like she hasn't done anything uh bad that we know about yet. Like that's the worst part. It's just like super suspicious. Yeah, like what the fuck is her aim? We literally do not know. Now, with that in mind, how does Mira feel about Delnus uh proximity to Ala Algrim through her mother? Um does that worry Mira? Um I think it's very much the thing of like Delnus seems to be in a similar boat that Mira is in terms of not really understanding what's going on there, not really having any extra special knowledge to offer. I think there is definitely this thing of like okay, so Delnus's mom is spying on me now, so that's cool. Uh it definitely I think that I don't know that Mira knows exactly what Adeline's deal is, but I think that she's seen enough in this case to at least get a sense that there is something weird about her necromantically, magically, that Delnus does not seem to understand or realize. So that's a very odd position, I think, for Mir to be in. Because there's no way to bring that up, right? You can't really just broach the topic of like, hey, Delnus, I think your mom's undead. Like, what are you supposed to do there? What if Delnus is just like, yeah, she's always been undead. Did you not know that? Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you have a problem with that? <laughs> is Delnus part undead? Uh, it may have like been happened after she was born that Adeline became undead. Um, or Delnus could just be half zombie. Who knows? Oh, hell yeah. That'd be fucking <gasps> cool. Oh, Badass. yes. That would be a great story. It would. Be careful, Mira. She might bite you. <laughs> Speaking of incredible stories and huge undertakings and i wanted to talk to you about something that uh, has been like your kind of arc recently my arc whatever do you mean well now i'm not gonna get mad at the writers for trials and trebuchets because <clears throat> like i know there's only so many so much material that you can go through but this does seem like winsler going after this vial does seem like his own pink topaz situation here eh <laughs> yes <laughs> you're just gonna be asking everyone for like hey you got a platinum vial i i got the pickled eggs or the pickled eye situation worked out i just need this vial yeah everything else is fine i just need the goddamn vial if asking everybody <laughs> i meet about the vial is the one of the only ways i'm gonna get it then I will get my hands on it one way or another. Yeah, but you, you're not going to buy it. It's prohibitively expensive. Yeah. Like, maddeningly. So, so. I will get it the old-fashioned way. Stealing. Stealing. Crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question, does that financial restriction that you're facing now, and, like, this is something that uh, you can see for a lot of, like, wizards in D&D, &D, is being a wizard is an incredibly expensive thing. Uh, if you want to copy down, like, you know, spells into your book, it costs 100 of gold per spell level or whatnot, or maybe 25 or so, who knows. Like, it takes time, you have to buy special paper, inks, etc. Now, do these financial restrictions, have these colored Winsler's plans for returning home and working on the farm? Because the big magic costs so much. The stuff that you would need to alter a landscape, let's say, or to create, like, beings to do farm labor, these things would all cost money, you know, money that your family doesn't have. Is that something that is going through Winsler's mind right now? Or is it just, oh, I'll always find a way to get my hands on it, you know? Like I always had before, It'll, it shouldn't be an issue. Probably not going through his head at the moment because, you know, it takes time to actually like study and learn how magic works and functions. His parents probably don't have any sort of an inkling as to how magic works. So... I th no, but he has a really good idea now. He's been going to school for a whole year now. Ha ha ha, yeah. <laughs> mm. um, so that's- Your intelligence is like 20, all right? <laughs> yeah, but I think there it definitely requires like more time in order to even begin to do that. And I think it's not so much of a financial issue yet, probably just because, you know, there's the whole opportunity with Crow Mercantile and such like that. So that'll probably be able to at least supply Winsler with- some modicum of like you know income to be able to have access to this sort of stuff but i guess we'll see hell yeah maybe you should just sell the farm to crow mercantile no that would be like a great idea no that way you could not. get the cash and it would be well taken care of he would it's put a, a shopping mall on top of it <laughs> <laughs> 
Think of the cows. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Do you oh. think that he has some lying around in his office? What, a, a shopping mall? <laughs> no, 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 a vial of that thing that you're looking for. Crow? Ah, uh, no way. What What does Crow need a vial for? What if they produce it in, like, twelve? Then, like, you can Ooh. have, like, a lot. I only need one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you could have a lot. You could sell the others. I could have a lot. It's that or fucking CF mudflats, so not a lot of options here. <laughs> uh, oh, too true. Crying. Uh, well, I feel like we've gotten this introductory stuff out of the way. It's time for us to get into like the true stars of the show now. I am speaking, of course, of Ernest and Enora, who I'm just like dying for them to have their own like newspaper comic strip. <laughs> they are like incredible. Carla. Yes. Does Integrity resent having to babysit her siblings when all this other shit is going on? Or does she, like, find herself entertained by them? Um, absolutely not. She is very entertained. Like, she misses her family. Like, the dynamic of the Idleberry family, if no one has noticed yet, is, like, they're a very tight-knit, um, I guess, like, middle-class family. So... Having her siblings there is a wonderful gift. Apart from the fact that Ernest hates Integrity's magic because he's into like lightning and all that. <laughs> but um, apart from that, there's no resentment there. She's just absolutely enjoying having her siblings there. Even them getting in trouble and um, with Elric finding them leaving because of the Ernest and Honora, <laughs> I thrive in that. <laughs> And that's speaking about Integrity, not Carla. Absolutely. <laughs> Integrity's proud of her siblings. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Does she worry about them being close to her might, like, endanger them? I don't think that she's thinking about that right now. That's very interesting. I hope that does, that does not bite me in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I hope the children don't get killed. That would make it, like, a pretty sad time. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, no. That would be brutal. Yeah, you know Luke. He's always killing our families. The class classic Luke there. He's always killing kids. <laughs> oh my God. He put a known murderer next to my family. Listen, if Sylvia's Winsler's grandma, Do then you mean that Selty? makes uh, Ferdinand <laughs> Winsler's great babe, aunt. Babe, you mean Selty, right? Because I was... Oh, Selty, Selty, Selty. God damn it. The time travel magic that would be required for that to happen. God damn it. I... Fucking Selty and Sylvie being in the same podcast is bullshit, and they shouldn't exist. They shouldn't. Like, they they should shouldn't have each other there. It's wrong, right? They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't do that. Thank you, God. <laughs> but no, that's very interesting to know that like Integrity is not concerned for her sibling's safety because it's not even like a possibility in her mind that they could get hurt. I find that Wildcliff is safe, right? Hey, that's an incredibly relatable thing. Like, you hear so many stories of, like, I didn't think it would happen to someone I knew, you know? I didn't think it would happen to, like, a brother or sister of mine. I didn't think that an ascendant could come through the, like, pipes of the school and eat my sister and brother Jesus. while they were sleeping. Nathan! You hear always. that all the time. People are always saying Nathan. that. <laughs> Luke is not allowed to edit this. Nathan, Luke cannot hear this, please. Yeah, he'll hear the final cut, of course, <laughs> uh, when this episode comes out. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sam, Hello. speaking of these two, Sarenup has been an only child all her life, and I assume her, you know, usual life up till now has not included a ton of, like, working with small children outside of, you know, acts. Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like for Sarenup to be, like, so close to her little cousins without them even realizing who you are to them or who they are to you, rather? I think her first focus is making a good impression like when they like when Ernest and Nora were like you can do lightning stuff that's so cool like oh my heart just kind of soared for a moment because I'm kind of like I I have something that the kids like and I can like entertain the kids with this like this is great definitely it's a new experience um like obviously she had to deal with other kids like when she was a kid herself but it never like intermingled as she got older I think that her main thing is kind of like, oh my god, I'm meeting more of my family. But she also understands that, like, potentially there will be a really bad reaction from, like, Integrity's mom if she found out. And what would that mean? Like, would she not be allowed to be around her younger cousins or even Integrity anymore? 
I think her main thing right now is just kind of focusing on, I want to be someone that these kids like. That's very sweet. And I like that. I do have a hypothetical question, like as a follow up, though. Mm -hmm. If they found out about Sarenet's like lineage and her relation to them, and like, let's say Ernest and Honora found out somehow without their mother finding out. Mm -hmm. And they just straight up ask Serenep, hey, why didn't you tell us this? Like, mm. do you know how Serenep would respond to these children? Or like, would it just be like flustered? I think she'd be flustered, but she would try and answer as best she could. I think um, she would try and explain it as like, obviously when Integrity found out, it was very much a, okay, let's not. Mm. I don't think it was until, I guess, Serenep kind of proved how much she actually cared when integrity took a nosedive <laughs> or at least um <laughs> cork is um uh second yoda. hand disguised as integrity yoda took a nosedive off into lava um that there was like the first moment of like oh yeah like we're like you care we're family fuck yeah so i think <sighs> she would try to explain it as like you know like i didn't know how you were going to react and i was worried about you know the rejection mm of it but it wasn't her intention of keeping it a secret forever sort of thing i gotcha well i look forward i hope that we get to see something like that or like that come to a head here soon um just because i'm so excited for like the family drama i have the theory that maybe integrity's mom might already know like i i don't know if it's in the episode or not but i made the side comment of like you know, Serenep is a family name, which it is. So it's like mm -hmm. her saying, so Integrity saying the full name, even though it's not the last name, I'm wondering if like that's something that her mom would know about. Like it seemed like when they were first meeting at the dorm for like the dinner party, there was like some kind of recollection. But then like as Serenep is kind of like, this is me being a hostess and like I really enjoy being around everyone that like it kind of like moved off to okay we're having a nice dinner mm, excellent i like that now this question is for the whole group and this is you know a fun bit here i want us to try to figure out which npc or i would also allow a pc to be involved here who would be the best babysitter for ernest and Honora? who would be the worst <laughs> kurt would be probably the worst it's Either like this, or we like just put a bunch of potential babysitters on the uh, McDonald's, McDonald's, one small black coffee, <laughs> and like we have food at home triangle. Yes, 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 yes. Bailey Blue, probably the worst. Oh, Ooh, I Bailey yeah. Blue is always my choice for like the okay, worst because, option. Because I don't know. I feel anything. like there's two versions of like a way that someone could be a bad babysitter for Ernest and Nora. There's either the like complete ne completely neglectful approach of like, yeah, run around, do whatever. I don't fucking give a shit, which I feel like some characters would be. And then there's the Bailey Blue approach of like, you need to sit down in this chair. You can move two times per hour. If you would like food, raise your hand and wait until I have responded. Like they would just go crazy. Uh, they would become uncontrollable. So I feel like Bailey Blue is- Hyper management. Yeah, Bailey Blue is like the extreme on the side of like trying to babysit them too hard versus some characters who probably would not babysit them hard enough. Like- that that girl who was reading a book in the swimming pool in uh, Lightyear, if we're <laughs> bringing up old characters, if you remember, oh, Carla. Oh my god! Holy shit! What a blast for the past! <laughs> Imagine if Axe took care. That of would them. not be babysitting. That would just be. Axe gang would try recruiting. and get them to join his gang. Yeah, it literally would be like gang recruiting. <laughs> we gotta have that crossover though, because that sounds amazing. My brain went straight to Kurt just because I. 100% get the vibe that Ernest is one of those kids who will like put anything in his mouth if he is not supervised. And Kurt has so many little like pieces mm -hmm. and bobs and oh bits God. from like all his like work that Ernest would just 100% just be like, oh, cool, what's this? I'll yeah. Kurt is like 90% certain to fall asleep within yeah. the first 30 minutes of babysitting, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Bailey, on the other hand, I feel like would have like, have read a whole book on how to babysit mm -hmm. and would follow it to the letter of like, all right, children, I hear that we, that uh, children enjoy games. So I have put together a real time strategy board game <laughs> for us to play. 
Uh, I need the two of you to read the rule book before we get started. Make sure that you are able to memorize these because we will be quizzed before starting in order to make sure that the game uh, goes as quickly as possible. Do you have any questions God, for me? literally. Okay, I have a suggestion that could either go really, really well or really, really, really poorly, which is... I think I know who this is. Okay, maybe. Uh, it's Babysitter Syndra. <gasps> yes, I knew who it was! Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Syndra makes them hold up fucking signs. I that would be adorable. It. They can have the time of their lives. Syndra radicalizes them. Yes. Syndra radicalizes the younger generation. <laughs> Perfect. That's just what we need. You know who I was thinking about? Who? Zara. Oh, Zara. Zara. She would just be very Ooh. sweet to them. Ooh, Zara would be so sweet. Yeah. Zara yeah. would let them get away with too much. It's Probably. True. But oh. like, I, I, I just find it so adorable imagining how... If it is the case that Ernest and Enora has some qualities of integrity, they would just be laughing and playing around. That's like my imagination of how that babysitting thing will be. Mm. Um, but I do agree that they might eat a little too much. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of wondering, like, how would the power couple of Delnus and Mira do? <laughs> Especially because they love, they seem to like really enjoy the Raytheon Manor. Like, I imagine like they would go outside to like one of like the um the lawns and just bolt just around the area until they tire themselves out. Mira's probably like fucking trying to chase after them and make sure they don't get lost and Delnus just taps <laughs> her shoulders like, it's okay, like let them run. They'll get tired. It's fine. <laughs> Set them free. I love that. On the other hand, Elric would probably give them alcohol. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's just the vibe that I get for Listen, Elric right now. I, I, you guys are, I don't know how old you are. You're, you're some age. I don't know. I, I don't know how humans and tieflings age but if you're gonna drink i'd rather you do it in the manner <laughs> i just remembered this this tiktok and it's like they're just like these people are staring at this kid and they're like uh do you want a beer and this other guy goes he's four so what do you want me to do that's very accurate yes it's that god yeah i don't know how to interact with a child <laughs> oh but no i Thank you for all of these wonderful answers as I, like, go and begin my whole Babysitter's Club AU. Yes. Um, like, oh a ton of NPCs being babysitters, and they only ever have one client. Um, oh, it's goodness, all, well. just all of these people babysit Ernest, Ernest and Honora, but, like, that's the only two people they babysit, and no one can handle them twice in a row. They have oh, to yeah. do a rotation. It would be very interesting to see how Adeline deals with children, because I feel like she would either like have a perfect mask of like being a good mother, or she would treat them like tiny adults in the worst way. Scare possible. them into Aww. submission. What do you mean you haven't God, done your taxes true. yet? Here, take this. Take this briefcase. Take this briefcase. I expect those taxes to be on my desk by five. <laughs> There's not even a desk. Like it's just like the like living room table. She is undead. She's forgotten that children need food to eat, so she like just doesn't prepare anything. She's like, no. Oh, food. Yes. Uh, I have these nuts from the trees outside. Help yourselves. That's Adeline. Adeline says, "Where be your nutcracker?" <laughs> There's some gazpacho soup in the fridge. Do you want some gazpacho soup? Oh, just gazpacho soup burned my mouth. What do you mean kids don't eat like eat like lawn grass? What are you talking about? Of course they do. Yeah, actually, Ernest and Nora probably do though. Farm fresh children. Farm fresh. <laughs> they make mud potions daily. Mud oh, potions. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's adorable. Wait a second. They want to drink the mud. They want to learn please. about magic, and they're just like <laughs> mixing all together. Like this will make you fly. It's like, oh, thank you, honey. Oh. Um, no, no, that was delicious. That's probably how Integrity got interested in alchemy in the first place. Mud potions, yeah. And like some sticks and leaves. <laughs> Mud potion. How Aww. dare you? I'm not Ira. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like, oh yeah, I'm making a mud, like a, like a little kid in this universe making a mud potion and they accidentally create like a druid potion of some sort Aww. because it's all like from nature and it's like, oh, this actually does something. <laughs> Don't give Luke any ideas. Oh, I'm sorry. Luke, ignore everything I have said. Winsler makes a tiny mud potion and feeds <laughs> it to Mr. Wiggles. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, so adorable. thank you all so much. I think I have uh, one more question, but it isn't from me. As uh, everyone who is listening to this knows, we recently had a mailbag episode. And unfortunately, not every question could be answered. So... I've taken it upon myself to take the cream of the crop of the <gasps> leftover ones and Ooh. ask one every now and then. 
So it's more like the 1% milk of the crop, really. 1% <laughs> milk. 1% one, 1 cow. It's a whole cow. How did it get in here? 1% magic in the in the cow. That's not a lot of magic. Oh my god. I I made a huge mistake. I shouldn't have said it like that. Oh. <laughs> well, this question was asked by Oceanic, mm -hmm. uh, one of the members from our Discord. Hi, Oceanic. Hi, Oceanic. Hello. Hi. If each member of Swim were to start a collection of random, arbitrary items like rubber ducks, what would they collect? Oh, boy. I feel like Mira would have a stamp collection. She just seems like the kind of person who would have a stamp collection. It was probably the first club that she got into, and now she keeps it up out of habit. Aww. Yeah, and like, it's not just stamps like that you mail from different cities, but it's also like stamps like that you cut out of books where there's like the fake letter things or like stamps from like toy sets and stuff like that. There's like sparkly <laughs> stamps. That, wow. Oh, That's yeah. Cute as hell. I could see her like gluing it together to put in like a little stamp book and like making her own and stuff. Aww. All these stamps and you still can't mail your mother. One year for Valentine's Day, she gives oh. Delnus a stamp, um, one of her favorite stamps for Delnus, and Delnus puts it on a hat, and mm. that's a cute thing. Oh, I love that. That's a very cute thing. What about the rest of y'all? I know they don't exist in this world, but for some reason, I can perfectly picture Winsler collecting like random old like memory sticks, like USB drives that he finds in places, even though they don't <laughs> to his knowledge do anything. I know, I know they don't exist, but if they did, I feel like I could totally picture Winsler just keeping a, like a drawer of them or like a storage bin full of them. Memoir sticks. They're made. They're used with magic. Yeah. <laughs> this is how Winsler loses the rest what? of his soul. How? He gets memory sticks from Salty. Like, hi, Salty. Do you have any memory sticks? Do you have memory sticks? I just need them. Salty, I need so many more memory <laughs> sticks than what you've got. I have 16 seventeenths left of my soul. How many memory <laughs> sticks can that get me? Two. Worth it. <laughs> oh, man. Memory sticks are expensive. Eh, his soul is cheap, actually. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was trying to be nice about it, but okay. I could see Integrity having a closet full of, like, bodies, knives that you would get from a mall. So like a bunch of like anime swords and shit like that. <laughs> I just I thought you meant a kiosk, like a knife kiosk. <laughs> like what? That too. No, I'm saying all, them all, all of it. Like between she has a keyblade in there. <gasps> she also has like a weird uh dagger with like a dragon's face cut into the blade. Oh my gosh. That sounds Yo, if she has a keyblade, does that mean Mickey Mouse in the world is canon? Uh -oh. Well, this podcast is owned by Disney. That's true. Oh yeah, you're right. Shit. What? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say that integrity has a has a has a closet full of bodies. <laughs> Jesus! All right, what is it with you and death again? Bodies or bones? Oh my god! <laughs> it's always death. Don't with you get you, it, Carla. Ben? Integrity uses it for money. What do you mean? Bones, skeletons, money. Well, I mean the bones what? are their money. The bones are their dollars. <laughs> the bones are their money. The worms yeah. are their dollars. Oh, excuse me. How much does this cost? <laughs> One bone, please. Integrity it will pull your hair up, but, but not, not out, out this Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> One humorous, please. Oh, but I can't. I can't right now. Please not this. What can Serenup collect? Yeah, Serenup. I feel like has so much money that she could just like go all out with whatever she collects. But I also feel like because she has so much money, she would collect something that would be considered worthless. So I'm not sure. Warhammer figurines. Something you can't get with money. Something you can only get with effort. Like Ooh. Polaroids of people she meets. She collects the people that she meets. <laughs> I was going to say like a rock or like a leaf. Like any just like, oh, she goes for a walk out in like the courtyard and she finds a cool rock. Or like, oh, there's a feather on the ground. Let's this, there's just a pile of these things in her room now. Nature. Nature. She just has a bunch of detritus just strewn about her room. <laughs> what if? Oh. What if Serenip has a collection of orange rinds? What? Orange rinds? Like ones that you peel off and they make a weird shape? Yeah. What? Like it's so worthless, but like you my know? brain can't my brain can't make sense of the image. Like like the skin of an orange? Yeah, like 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 the bitter part. Oh, okay. And just like collecting it, like oh, oh, these are all the oranges I've had in my life. I bet her room smells weird. In that case, there's probably like a preservation charm or something to like they don't mold, but her room just smells like citrus all the time. That's a good smell. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I like that. Oh, yeah. No, like Serenip is going to create uh, not lemon pledge, but the orange scented version of pledge. 
<laughs> Sarah Neff then invented like the pine tree in the in the car. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she invents car fresheners, but there's no cars. Well, thank you all once again for joining me on this episode of Conversations and Catapults. You know, I hope that you all had a good time because I certainly yeah. did. And now, thank you. thank you for hosting as of always. Of course. Now, let's go ahead and get this uh, astral projection stuff started. That way I can go talk to Luke over in the spirit wo- the realm spirit and well. uh, sliding into the DMs, shall we? All right. All right. Don't worry. All your organs will be there. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, you're going to feel a slight pinch on your abdomen. That's totally normal. That's so normal. Uh, however, the, the incantation does involve the playing of the, the mid-roll music. Uh, what, what is that? What is that? Oh, is. Oh, there it is. Welcome back to Sliding into the DMs. I've got Luke here with me, uh, visiting in the astral realm. Hello, it's me, Luke, and I'm here astral projecting from the bathroom. Well, I'm glad to have you here with me uh, without our corporeal bodies weighing us down. Yes, that way we can't die while recording. Thank God, because the witches were very, like, promising that they were not going to harvest my organs. Um, I really hope mm, that is the case, because, mm. like, I can't feel a thing in my actual yeah. body right now. I, w- I wish you good fortune on that one, because all of my experiences with witches have been them taking things from me. Um, mostly, like, fingernails, uh, dead skin, eyebrow mm-hmm. hairs, that kind of thing. Spell components are weird as fuck, huh? <laughs> Gosh. Oh God! <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here, though. Hey, I'm glad to have you here. Yeah. Speaking oh, of thanks. witches, uh, you know, yeah, I don't actually have a good wet segue, but bear with me here. Absolutely. Speaking of witches, some witches are elves, mm. Mm. and I believe that you're on the record as being a pretty big elf hater. Is that correct? Oh my God! That's how we're going with this. I think that <laughs> traditional fantasy elves are kind of lame and boring. Yes, which is why they're everywhere because I want to make fun of them. <laughs> Well, perfect. Uh, speaking of elves where it's very easy to make fun of them, mm. I wanted to talk to you for a brief moment about Adeline, uh, no last name. I was about to say Adeline Rathren, but she's not that anymore, is she? Well, technically speaking, she's technically on the legal paper of elves is still Adeline Rathren. I think that she just does not ever want a single person to call her that. And there is an God. importance to the fact that she is still Adeline Rathren. That's not just me goofing around. There's a genuine uh, importance in in my plan, or not in my plan, but just my conception of things uh, to why why that is a minor but important piece of font. Yeah, go ahead and tell us why. Oh, well, you see, it's related to, yeah? All right, then keep your secrets. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I don't want you to just talk about how much you hate elves. I actually wanted to talk to you about how you play them uh oh because i really enjoyed the adeline stuff from mm. 145 um and, like her interactions with mira just being weird as shit yes so good it actually made me want to go back and like listen to the ala algrim appearances mm. and something that kind of struck me and i don't know if this is intentional on your part but i i wanted to know if the um characterization of these elves is is that you taking into account like their longer lifespan Mm. making them kind of like you know uh some people are just pawns because yes they die before you even get to know them very well Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yes with a character like all hologram a hundred percent yes that is the intent there of like this woman has lived so long that someone like altine does not register as anything more than like a teen who's doing his first part-time job essentially right like oh you'll work two shifts at the mcdonald's and then never show up again so uh, that doesn't really matter to me right like that's the way of things that's like a similar concept to like why she's like the way she is and just an absolute weirdo is because she's from a time so so long ago that the world is the world to her is strange but to the world now she is just this 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 artifact of something that does not exist any longer right Mm. so she must like think of mira almost as like a child like a gifted child Mm -hmm. but still just a child then Mm -hmm. huh like oh you have potential you know we'll see 
Yeah, um, absolutely. I would love to dig into. There's two races that I really would love to dig into, like the my my world conceptions of them, because I feel like it's been done. I don't know. I guess that's not true. I think a lot of the like a not human races would be pretty fun to dig into uh, as like getting an actual explanation of like, oh, what sets them to be the way that they are in this world? Because so far or it's like a big failing, I think, for a lot of people playing D&D or just in fantasy. And the reason why I traditionally uh, like you made the joke, but I, 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 I think Tolkien style elves are kind of silly. And I think a lot of fantasy races fail to set themselves apart. Um, there are notable exceptions, such as the way someone like Terry Pratchett writes, uh, uh, like, dwarves for a very good example, right? Uh, which is a fantastic, uh, kind of thing. Nathan, are you okay? <laughs> I'm so happy you mentioned Terry Pratchett. I love Terry Pratchett. I, um, I listen to Discworld audiobooks to help me go to sleep at night. <laughs> They're um, so good. But, so, uh, there's this thing, if you play D&D, where especially maybe 5e and maybe if you don't have a like if you just kind of like take a adventure from like a pre-written module for example there's this kind of like homogenous kind of energy about all of the races they are like for the most part and this is not a failing you can take a dragonborn and be like okay this dragonborn is a dwarf now and unless there's something that's super pivotal uh, that's not a big deal. That's uh, you can see that with a lot of background NPCs in Wildcliff, right? Like, s- if mm. I do even describe what uh, what race they are, of like this person's a gnome and something like that, the most impact that will likely have on a nothing NPC is like the voice I will choose to do, right? Um, but break us off that, a gnome voice real quick. Well, well, this would be what a gnome who works um in the uh just the artifice like an artificer gnome. I think they they would sound kind of like this incredible i god a part of me wants to pivot this whole show into just making you do different <laughs> like voices yeah that you just have in your like uh quiver there for you but yeah you were saying it yes. usually will only affect the voice it will usually only affect the voice for at least for me and so i would love to dig into like because i do have i do have these things prepared of like what makes these people what makes elves different what makes a high elf a high elf and a wood elf a wood elf because mm. we know from years and years and years and years ago of like when they did their history exam in, in the the penultimate pen and paper uh practical or practicum um episode 27 28 i think anyways uh what <laughs> the fact that you can just pull the title and episode number from your ass like that is ridiculous to me <laughs> it's I a very even, memorable title I, my the episodes of my show are just numbered and i can't remember the titles <laughs> um but that episode there's a question on the exam where i think sarah Nep- or no it's I think Tangerty might get it. I'm actually uncertain who might get it. I think it was either to Sam or Carla, but it was like, what ship did the elves come on? Which is super Tolkien-y. That's so yeah. Tolkien-y. The elves came from over the sea, from a, an eternal land, right? And it's like so silly, and I love it so much. Um, but like, there's things to dig into, and Alla Algrim, Alla Algrim is a way to dig into that. Like, who is this crazy woman? Like, Mira's father saying, oh, there's a tons of cases against the Lady of the Woods, like, but she's still the one who seems to be this uh, overarching figure, like, of most elves united under a knowledge of who this woman is, right? Mm. And so that's, like, an indicator, maybe. And and I hope to dig more into that as Adeline and Ala Algrim put their hooks into Mira and drag yes. her into that. Um and and what elf stuff they have going on. Uh, in, a, in a similar way, when we went to Lightmere years and years ago in Whiteout, I wanted to dig into dwarven kind of stuff and, and the, the, the relationship dwarves and dragonborn have. Those kind of things are interesting to me. It would be very interesting to see all of those things like mm-hmm. come up organically and stuff like that. I think um, you know it's part of that invisible world building mm-hmm. that a lot of DMs do where it is not something that is ever directly shown to the players like, A player is not going to ever find, oh, here's the history of how halflings (laughs) uh, settled in the southern reaches. But that invisible world building is Mm -hmm. still incredibly useful to keep Mm -hmm. characters from being, as you said, well, this person could either be a dragonborn or a dwarf. It doesn't matter because they're going to be this person either way. Exactly. Yeah. You can avoid that by being like, well, no, like culturally, 
uh, like many dwarves tend to be very private individuals mm-hmm. or things of that nature. Like so, yeah. that gets to inform your role playing, and then gets to inform the world around you. Absolutely. Um, some a character like Morundine could not be a, not a dragonborn, right? Like he could only ever be uh, a pure bone, right? That's the that defines so much about his character and all these things, right? It's just those kind of things. That I think. I want to stress them more, and Ala Algrim is a stepping stone to doing so with elf, elven heritage. Fascinating, and I'm excited to see you do the same with Adeline and undead mm. heritage. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right wait. word for it. But... Oh, that's a good way to put it, though. <laughs> yeah, that the way you said that makes me worry. <laughs> <laughs> Was her dad a lich? Is she like half lich? No, she's not. She's just a regular lich. She's just a lich herself. <laughs> I really enjoyed that moment where, um, for anyone who didn't believe that I was just like, yeah, Sarah, you guessed it, right? From the moment of like, oh, this woman is just undead. And she was just like, all right, now we're just going to go back to things. If anyone was curious, wow, Luke really changed his character between the first time she showed up and the second time she showed up. And it's like, oh, if anyone had any illusion that that was... Uh, an accident or not on purpose like for once a different voice was a plot point right fuck yeah <laughs> oh, moving on uh speaking of like history and the world around them yeah i've always found it interesting that research episodes are such a standard for this show and like mm-hmm. this campaign in particular it makes sense because they're in a school right they have yes. a ton of resources to learn from however it's also something that you have to avoid in order to like you know not just be a show of like you know, four kids sitting in a classroom reading an atlas. Like, that way you can exposit all of, like, the world information to them. Yes, correct. I wanted to, like, ask, like, what you do in order to keep these kind of episodes interesting mm-hmm. and engaging, not just for the audience, but also for the players. Yeah. So we've done these a couple times, and I think we've taken a different approach every time we've done one. We did one at the start of Autumn's Blend as well, uh, and now we've done one here, which is an interesting little just... Uh, rhyme of things um it can be as simple as them making investigation checks and me just being like this is what the books you find which is the first time they went to the restricted archives that's kind of what happened they told me what they were generally looking for and they rolled for it and 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 tried out new and inventive ways to try to find out what they were getting right like doing like a handstand on their act- hands yep 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 yep, yep. Um, Glad we were on the same pr- page there. Praying to the gods, which Integrity hasn't done in a while either, which is fascinating no. to me. I think she get a much her own different power. response. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but this time, but the, but the general guiding thing is like I want, I like having multiple subjects to pursue because mm. different characters, different players will be interested in approaching things from approaching different things and approaching the same thing from different angles Mm -hmm. and so for some characters or some players i can kind of guess at what that might be knowing that sam slash serenup was very invested in artists returning and also just generally enjoys just the reading of the book intelligence check kind of kind of thing i knew that putting that crystal ball there and saying there is an index find what you want there are these sections tell me what you're looking for you get one question on this subject and one question on this subject that for me was something i think is up sam's alley and was enjoyable for them as a player and mm-hmm. fits saren as a character who i imagine as a bookish nerd who carries around like a rolodex of like how to do xyz because you know she's a rich girl who's just like i was grown in a tube right uh, <laughs> wow, you're just giving out all of the Serenith backstory here. I was wondering, like, yep. damn, I, uh, I can't imagine any of the Cindermans loving each other enough to produce a child, but I guess making one of the tests to <laughs> sounds about right. It does, honestly. Um, <laughs> and and as, as for the other bit, throwing in the social engagement in that scenario of, uh, for Mira, I think is a good thing because it allows Sarah to get chance of acting and having a genuine conversation and uh in character and stuff like that which i know is something enjoyable for them uh and then that greases the wheels to continue that kind of in-character discussion as the research is ongoing which is a major 
Um, when that happens is good for the episode, and when it doesn't happen is kind of a bit of a stinker. When mm. there's planning going on that's not in character, it's kind of like, mm, what is, like, can you guys do this in character? Um, yeah, because, so, and part of the reason why that is is because it does affect what yeah. plans you make, which absolutely as a player can be frustrating because you might be playing a character with very different goals than your own, but mm -hmm. it's still, like, I don't know. I think it's very fun to play into, like, a character's uh, interests Absolutely. and faults when doing so. Absolutely, yes. Which is why I interjecting as Delnus into those moments of like them kind of making an artist plan was Delnus being like, "We can just make two dead bodies. When if one fails, it'll just turn into a mush. No issue here." Like she's just this weirdo who's like, "Yes, we'll just collect corpse parts and turn and make your mentor into a a corpse. We'll make Franken artists, right?" As if that's just a regular thing to be done. Yeah, no, that's um, way too badass to be regular. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Joan is missing out. God damn. Joan is missing out, right? Uh, the original conception of this was genuinely that Delnus and Mira were just going to go to the uh, Raytheon estate. There would be a kind of conversation between Elric and Mira which I really still want to have where I'm going to make and no one tell Sarah this. Sarah, if I know you listen to these, skip this one, okay? I want Sarah slash Mira to give Elric uh, lines, to like lyrics for his song to, to sing, which is why I've shown him in such a pitiful state. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> and that's why the, the lyrics were just ad line. Ad line. Ad line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so good what a great song what a great music professor head of the music department <laughs> i fucking um, loved that the uh fucking cover for that was he's really good at music theory he is <laughs> like god the he guy can't write himself but jesus christ can yeah. he analyze some sheet music and then if we go back to in history from to scandal, there's a the world equivalent of a Grammy, which I think is called a Bernie in his office. So oh, like yeah, Bernie 2024. <laughs> fuck. Um it's not fucking bad, but yeah. Um <laughs> just that it, it made me giggle. Uh yeah, so obviously in the past he might have been a better musician. Maybe something horrible happened where he lost his his muse. No, he didn't lose his drive. He lost his muse, right? Um, that's a genuine, yeah, that's the truth of it, right? Fuck. Um, and so there's stuff to explore and dig into with Adeline, even in that stuff, the, the, the remnants of a scandal long past, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and then as for Winsler Wallaby and Integrity Idleberry being there, we get to have the fun alchemy stuff. We get the kind of like talking about this we get winsler's fucking pink topaz quest to get his like platinum cylinder which did, i love did the others tell you that i made the same reference uh <laughs> yesterday carla <laughs> carla did tell me yes <laughs> i was sorry. about to say holy shit our brains man i'm telling you <laughs> sorry no i was told that one uh hate to break it to well, you i'm cutting that um, but it definitely does have the same energy where winsler's like is it here? Is it here? I'm looking for this. I'm going to find it, right? And oh boy, when he finds that, it's going to be a whole fun time. God, it's it's very fun to talk to Ben about his character goals and like, <laughs> what they might mean. Because I was like, yeah, so like the financial restrictions placed on wizards like can be really stringent. Does that affect what Winsler is thinking in terms of his future? He's like, no, I just really want to find that platinum vial right now. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get it before the tournament like happens like yes we're gonna need that extra body in there god what yep. a good spell for that though i know i cannot wait um are you gonna make I've him only... describe it when he summons it Ah, uh, yes absolutely oh, yeah. thank you and then i'm gonna give it a fucking name in my li like from my like typical nomenclature for that sort of thing kind of names which is to say very very stupidly long and kind of weird um god but no, that's so that is interesting. And I do appreciate you like sharing how you can make the like you do tailor different aspects to yes. different players. And I think that's a very mm -hmm. interesting like lesson to learn here is some things like this is not going to be one size fits all. Like uh, I Absolutely. think another similar thing might be this is not as common here, but 
uh, in other campaigns, like the dreaded shopping episode. Ah. Uh. Like, that's another one where you have to make sure, like, it's not just going to a different shop and, like, listing mm-hmm. off the items they have. You got to have a little bit of something for everyone to do because yeah. not everyone has something they want to buy or has money. Absolutely. I, yeah, you, if you want to see the way I do shopping episodes, look no further than, or shopping moments of, uh, look no further than when Autumn's Blend started and there was the thousand merchants who were like just insane people who were like, do do you need this? Buy this thing. And the players were like, I don't need that. And they're like, if you don't buy it, something terrible is going to happen to you. And they're like, all right, I'll I'll buy the thing. Right. And it's like, they think they have a choice in this matter, but uh, they don't. Right. This is the, the, them going into a shop is the one moment I get to fucking railroad them by giving, (laughs) going, there's 9,000 things in here. One thing you can afford, so have fun buying it, right? God, you asshole. <laughs> I hate that I hate shopping. I hate shopping. I have like trauma, D and D trauma associated with like waiting around for like two hours while people look through equipment lists and then I'm like, can we get on with things? Right? I'm so glad um, you don't have those. Or that when you do, it is uh you have to shop from people who are just mad at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you're going to do shopping, at least give me a fun shop- shopkeeper, you know? Damn like, right. That's my minimum request. Oh, yeah. That's the golden rule of D&D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fun uh, shopkeeper. <laughs> fun shopping. Fun, right. fun shopkeeper and pun names for inns. That's it. Speaking of fun shopkeepers, uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, these characters who are actually not shopkeepers, but I didn't have a good segue. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about, like, let me preface this, actually, in another okay. way. Okay. I don't know how often you interact with like small children uh, or like anything like that. But I fucking adore Ernest and Honora's uh, like bits, you know, whenever they show up, they're a fucking yes. joy. Like, are they inspired by anyone or is it just like, you're just trying to make the two cutest, but rapscallion kids that you can imagine. I took two disparate parts of integrity's identity. I ruptured them in half. And then I was given the inspiration of Icky and Milo from uh, Legend of Korra, which are the two yes. middle children in Tenzin in the Airbender family. And I was like, all right, just going to go with this kind of thing, right? And it's been, I think, delightful. It gives me a moment to, in of myself, create little things. I can say the darndest things as those little kids they just eat a bunch of sweets because it's this kind of concept of integrity came from somewhere and so that same like weird home life that churned out integrity is obviously churning out more of these like these two twins and and we also get hints in these episodes of like what their older brother is like also where it's like he told us if you take the nameplate off the person dies right (laughs) so good (laughs) And then she died. <laughs> was yeah, <just> fucking <laughs> like that. I I literally had to like. It made me upset that uh, Dropbox doesn't have like a back fifteen seconds button because I just wanted to listen to that. <laughs> it's very nice. It um, is. Yeah, oh. and and so I took the two p- components of integrity. Yeah, which, which are two like, components were those? Okay, uh, her younger sister has. I don't think we've gotten on, not super intensely, but she, her younger sister is absolutely a glutton in the way that integrity is, where anytime I ask, integrity, what is integrity, what are you all eating? And integrity's like, I'm eating this and this and this and this and this and this, <laughs> which I think we see also in their, their parent or their mother, where she's like, oh, there's got to be food. We got to get some food, right? Um, God. And- and so Nora's just constantly like, oh, I'm eating too much. And like, I have had too many sweets. I like children will just eat until they cannot eat any longer in my experience. Um, at least those who enjoy a, a nice, have a really big sweet tooth, right? Um, and, and so the additional component of that that I think kind of goes corollary to it is just being that kind of greed we see in integrity Mm. where she's like i refuse to give up anything uh there was an alternative i'm going to marry crow for his yes there was a alternate where when uh ernest says this is what i saw in in the mirrors where nora just talks about she just saw herself being the richest person alive right 
Um, God. And then so, and then so the the part with Ernest is like the headstrong kind of like talk first, think later, and like big buff idiot kind of energy integrity embodies sometimes. God, uh, but just as a kid, where he's like, I don't know anything about the world, but I I can I I'm just stupid confident, right? <laughs> yes. God, what a king. Oh, now uh, this might be like a weird hypothetical mm-hmm. question that you have no oh. interest in answering. However, it just made me think while you were describing them, like if we aged them up or like saw them as main characters in a campaign, what class mm-hmm. do you think they would be? Ooh, I think that Anora might be a. Hmm, my brain pulls me towards some sort of and ah. Uh, uh, sorcerer doesn't necessarily make sense for for one reason or another. Sure, um, it does. They're from the you know they're a branch family from the Cinderman bloodline. That's fair. That is fair. That is fair. Um, and so and plus there's other m- m- manners of which you can acquire or be imbued with sorcerer sorcerer's powers. There's always fun to be had there. But just like the 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 um, I don't know for some reason. And sorry to all the sorcerers out there. I associate avaricious people with sorcery in a way, right? And maybe that was just my first, like, dipping the toes in and playing D&D and all the sorcerers I ever met were always, like, played to be these very greedy characters and, like, uh, like I, all for me, give all to me, I want it, right? Which, which is demonstrated the way that I now play, like, Angelica and stuff. I'm now thinking about the only sorcerer that has been in my campaign that you play in was definitely this archetype. <laughs> <laughs> um as for Ernest, I would say I can imagine him as a uh fighter. A thousand percent. Not a, a barbarian? Fighter. No, I think that he's hmm. No, I don't think that he has like the 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 the, the passion or like that kind of like deep untapped well of emotion to be to fit into a barbarian or nor does he have like the historic lines of everything i think he, he would be more the type who would be like okay mom and dad my other all my other siblings got cool jobs ciao i'm gonna go become an adventurer and just go to the store and buy like a sword and just head out on the road He's that night die right in his first goblin like <laughs> raid are you kidding me you oh. this boy is dead action economy is gonna eat him alive you need a party <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Ernest, make some friends, bud. Ernest, make friends other than oh. your sister, please. <laughs> I love them though. The oh. the twins are such fun. Um It makes yeah. me so happy whenever Integrity like volunteers to like take them on mm-hmm. just because like it feels a very fun way to like n- number one, inject levity into a situation easily. Mm-hmm. Number two, cause problems on purpose. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like rolling poorly on the stealth on the exit out. <laughs> <laughs> fucking incredible that's so amazing that's so amazing all of it just because Miriam did not want to have a kind of awkward conversation with Elric and then he's like why are you in my house what are you doing here right like obviously Mira has been at the El- or the Wraithrun estate more than just once between Scandal and now yeah. and obviously Elric's like alright it's chill that you're here but now that there's like this weird oh he's gonna ask me about the music and I don't want to ever talk about the music don't ever I do not want to talk about you performing and serenading your like separated wife right and i do not want to talk to you about that my professor um god yeah the uh, joyful idea of the marchands on campus running into elric Rathrin and him explaining to them what is happening how his their daughter oh your daughter's a great help that is a mwah, beautiful idea to me well now we know what's going to happen while they're in the tournament <laughs> unable to actually interfere with elric's uh schmoozing <laughs> absolutely god. mira make a perception check you see in the stands <laughs> god oh perfect well speaking of tournaments we better get back to our bodies that way you can go oh, ahead and record yes. this episode where you're actually going to be mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh running a whole tournament oh, back to things it's fun i'm glad we only got one actual duel in the autumn's bl- blend kind of arc right like a, a tournament arc so bloated you had to split split it in half you know yeah uh, <laughs> listen it, it turns out it was fight. mostly a festival arc for that bit now we're yeah. getting into the tournament arc Yes, it is going to be slam packed, quite frankly, uh, in a way that I hope is fun. Uh, who are they fighting uh, in that next fight? Do we know? Mm, 
they're fighting the replacement kind of like substitute for the Murundine kind of team. The um, Murundine team. Which, the Murundine team, yes, which Kurt had described to Winsler as some sort of automaton, which was relentless and quite a piece of work. As in, like, Kurt was like, it's so cool, but it could also be taken to mean, like, yo, this thing's gonna fuck you guys up. Uh, Toll returns. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, zombie <laughs> toll. <laughs> that would be great. That's toll, fucking cool. Toll walks out, breaks the broom over their fucking knee, and is like, let's fucking go. Let's, let's fucking go, and then just starts, like, dropping folks, fuck shooting yeah. laser out of his the crystal ball. That would be so fucking cool. If you're Are not you doing me? this, you have time to repair it. You're recording tomorrow. It's... <laughs> <laughs> well oh. luke thank you so much for joining me here in the astral realm yes uh, and i would like to also thank our listeners for joining us as well oh, uh, yes as you know broadcasting from the astral realm is not cheap and for that reason if you have the means to do so i highly recommend you hop on over to patreon patreon.com slash trials and trebs mm-hmm. toss a few bucks our way if you can afford it you know you get bloopers you get notes you get maps made by the one and only uh Luke, Luke, I appreciate you uh, doing a little pose there for you, for our audience, even though <laughs> for this all is an the audio audience medium. members. Well, they're astral projecting; they can see me, right? <laughs> oh, true. Uh, <laughs> and plus, at a certain tier, if you pledge mm-hmm. for uh, three months or more, you can even yes create your own Wildcliff NPC. And oh boy, howdy! If if you're planning on doing that, I must tell you, I cannot stress so strongly that. If that's something that interests you, you must get in on that in the near, very, very, very near future before it goes away. Because only so many it, NPCs we can outsource. Yes, <laughs> there's so many. There's a huge backlog, folks. Yeah. Um, Still, great, great perk to have. That's why you should jump on mm-hmm. it right now and right now. go pledge before they run out. Yes. Uh, now, but let's say you know you don't have the financial means. Totally understandable. Mm-hmm. We've all been there. Mm-hmm. In that case, I highly recommend you let a friend know. Reach out, retweet some of the great tweets over at uh, the Trials and Trebuchets Twitter, you know? Yeah. Make those memes <laughs> pop off. That way we can get the word of mouth going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, also, mm-hmm. highly recommend you check out uh, their Instagram, at Trials and Trebs. I said their Instagram like I'm not a part <laughs> of the fucking show. As if you're not show. part of this, yeah. <laughs> I'm not redoing it. Uh, is there no, any other? Uh, oh, and let's say that you don't have social media, you know, you think it's the devil i agree Mm, you'd be right yeah Yeah. no (laughs) hey straight up you're living a much better life than i am right now (laughs) Um, however you could be living an even better one if you rate and review the podcast on your podcatcher of choice we literally do read all of them because yes. whenever a new one comes in, Luke will post it in the group chat for all of us to read and react to. So yes, make sure, it's true. you know, if you have kind words, put them there because we will definitely see it. Yes, it's true. If you have unkind words, fuck off. <laughs> Luke is that's laughing. That's I want to be clear. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, that's it. it. That's <laughs> it. All right, perfect. <laughs> no, that's ending the episode. Good stuff. Thank you, Luke, for joining me. I cannot wait for the next one.